One, we are live with Mr. Tim Winter. Tim Winter, how are you this morning, sir? Morning, Kelly. Doing great. How are you? You know what? I'm good. I, I realized before we started this podcast this morning, you are the only person I don't write down questions for prior to the podcast and send off to. I don't think you have ever even asked me that. You probably would never expect me to be that well prepared for something. No, it's just off the cuff, Kelly. We're, we're, you are the only person I think, uh, and I think this is true. I think you're the only person that I've ever had a podcast where I don't do any prep at all. And I just get on this and we talk, we walk, we talk Timberwolves. We talk cash reconciliation, revenue cycle. We all you kinds know, of, you know, what we should kick off with Kelly. What? Test, testing out some new fishing gear last night. First, first cast, rod and reel, pulled in a 21 inch large mount bass. What kind of an is absolute it hog bait casting equipment or is it spinning rod? Oh, just standard spin rod. Um, just fishing with a bobber, threw mm -hmm. it out there, and it went down quick. What, um, night crawler or something, or what was the bait? I threw a sucker man off. I was actually hoping for a pike, but nice. I didn't mind. It was an absolute hog. That's a big one. What, uh, how big a sucker man? Um, it was fairly good sized. I'd say, you know, probably six inches. Okay. And so the spinning rod is a pretty hefty spinning rod you're fishing yes. with. Yes, heavier duty than I'm using the bass, and I actually put branded line on, which I normally wouldn't use, but rather than throwing a leader on there, that all worked really well. Nice. I also got, because I have such old fishing equipment, I upgraded and got myself a new bait casting reel called a Daiwa Steez. It's a bait casting reel, and it's the latest and greatest. It's all, all the young guys are using well, you know, makes they, sense to repeat one of them. I, because of my age, my youth. Keep you young. My, yeah, I got mine used off of eBay. They're so expensive. I, I, there's no way I was going to buy a new one. So I got mine used off of eBay, and then I was going to send it back. And the the guy gave me another ninety dollars off from Japan. Nice. So it ended up costing just two hundred bucks, um, which for that reel is uh, quite a value. My wife would disagree with that description of yes. fishing gear, but. I have gotten a couple of new bait casters for, for bait, uh, bass fishing. Lance and I are, my twin brother Lance, for those of you don't uh, that are out there that don't know, we are both fishermen. And so Lance and I both got a few new bait casters because, as again, our stuff was 20 years old. Yeah, just replace it little by little over time. I will say this. When you go to some of the high-end sporting places, you're talking to these 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds, and they are completely convinced the new technology with spinning reels and bait casters is far superior. They say you because we're going. I'm going from a 20 year old Shimano Corrado in those kind of reels. They say you can't believe how much better the new equipment is. And I will tell you, I did tests with measurements, and they're no better at all. They're just <laughs> not better at all. There's there's no truth at all to a modern bait caster casting any farther than an old high quality bait caster. It is, I would say they're smoother probably, but 20 years of hard use you yeah. know, does that. What about predictions for the Timberwolves? Well, I'm, I, th I think we'll get a win. It'd be nice to give the home crowd a win after going over for two in the series. We'll get a win, hopefully make it a little bit interesting. Rolling off four in a row is going to be tricky, but it would be nice to extend the series, get some more experience for the team, and who knows? Anything could happen. They've, they've, I, already, I, they've already outreached my expectations, so. This I think is that's all. true for a lot of people. Yeah. So what about cash reconciliation, revenue cycle? Do people do people still need it? And and if they do still need it, why? Why why do yeah. people today still need cash reconciliation revenue cycle? Yeah, oh. the, the environment definitely hasn't changed. It's still a need, um, simply for the fact that there are a lot of payers in the industry. There's a lot of consolidation of data. There are groups out there that now act as clearinghouses. Um facilitating the exchange of payments and EDIs between the providers and the payers, being able to reconcile all that activity, again, being able to direct that payment activity to the correct business unit, to the correct system. Um, often that can be a manual effort. Um, so having some automation for those, for those processes um, and being able to identify and harness all the data around those payment transactions so that we can ensure that it's been 
posted appropriately that everything that's been applied to those patient accounts ties back to the bank. Um, and to be able to perform that three-way reconciliation between what's hitting the bank, what's being applied to the patient accounts, and what ultimately is being booked to the general ledger, um, that hasn't gotten any easier. And in some cases, I would say it's gotten more complicated. So it is definitely an E out there. We've been going strong now for 15 years since we originally built the tool. Um, business is growing um, as we gain experience and as we further enhance our reputation. It's been, it's been very successful getting out there and finding clients to be able to help them relieve some of those pain points and headaches around being able to reconcile their cash, manage all those transactions. And is it just the biggest, I know we're in some of the biggest hospital and clinic systems in the country, but is it just big hospitals and clinics that you're working with? Yeah, it's, re it's really not. And then to that end, in the last 18 months, we've, we've spun off a separate platform so that we can address those mid-sized and smaller providers that struggle with those manual processes as well. So in addition to our on-premise solution called CARS, we also have a cloud solution called VMware, which we've been offering for the last 18 months. And so we have a half a dozen clients that are used in that tool. And it can be everything down to a single hospital uh, with a handful of clinics or even um, you know, a, a provider that's, that's running half a dozen clinics, but has volume that necessitates some automation so that they can save even as little as one FTE, the cost of one FTE. And with that smaller tool, the VMware cloud software as a service solution, we can bring that out at a lower price point to be able to meet the needs of those smaller providers as well. Are people, are the customers generally doing this because they, they, want the money they need to rec rev, um, recognize that money that's that they're not every month um, or is it because of audits that they need to pass or like why do what drives someone to say hey we need to we need to look at cash reconciliation software or revenue cycle software um, to, to bring in yeah I, I think it's a combination of factors one is providing some automation to reduce the overhead and the cost of manual processes, cost of labor, FTEs. So being able to automate those processes, provide tools. Um, but it's also, as you indicated, it can be a result of the inability to simply reconcile and balance cash in your bank reconciliations, um, making sure that you're tying out to the general ledger, to the bank what's being applied to those patient accounts, but also increasing the timeliness of applying that cash. Ideally, you want to get that cash posted to those patient accounts, to those insurance claims, the same day the money hits the bank. And so to be able to do that, uh, introducing these automated tools allows you to get that cash applied quicker, which then saves the downstream effort of either delaying a bill that might need to be sent to a patient for their responsibility or unnecessary follow-up on claims that have already been paid but the money just simply hasn't been applied um, to those accounts. And so I, I would say those are the probably the three primary factors, the timeliness of cash application, the ability to reconcile, and then to reduce those manual labor costs and processes. And why hasn't Epic or Cerner <coughs> eaten this area up? I know they've tried to, because um, they want to control everything. You know, yeah. what, what keeps them from doing that? Well, I think... <laughs> A couple of things. One, often, especially with the larger organizations, they're doing work in multiple billing systems. And they also have a need to reconcile not only that patient cash that's being applied within the billing system, but also all of your non-patient transactions as well. And so we provide automated tools around any bank transaction, debit or credit, whether it's patient-related, non-patient-related. Um, but I also think their focus in, in many ways, very appropriate is on the clinical side of the business. And so the, the accounting, the reconciliation, um, isn't always a, a priority for those organizations, not to, not to disparage or, or to discount that. I think it, it, it is a process that touches not just revenue cycle, but it touches accounting and treasury. And so I don't know that that's an area of expertise for groups like Epic or Serter or EMR, they're not necessarily addressing that full scope or bandwidth around managing cash for an organization. Okay. What um, What about outside of hospitals and clinics? Have, have we considered 
moving outside? Have we had that opportunity yet to go outside of hospitals and clinics for cash reconciliation, or do you see that coming at some point? I definitely think the tools that we've developed could be leveraged in other industries as well. We have gotten very efficient at processing and rest, reconciling financial transactions. And so bringing that data in from the banking partners or the payment processors and yeah, harnessing that data and reconciling, um, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be reconciled just to a healthcare remittance or patient accounts. We can reconcile to, you know, invoicing activity. I think the tools that we've developed are really industry agnostic and could be applied in a, in a myriad of different approaches or, or to solve a, a host of different problems within multiple industries. So yes, I, I think we will expand in the future. I think we'll find other applications for the tools and the platforms that we've developed. And you call it tools, but it's, it's a software suite, right? I mean, yeah, it's, you know, call it tools, modules, applications. It's a host of, um, I would say solutions that exist within a single platform, um, that can perform all different types of automations, um, around bringing data together, reconciliation, um, and those types of, those types of things. Yeah. Uh, how far away are we from AI taking all that over and just automatically being able to do all that work for us? Is that going to come in this software or is there going to be a day when, when you see AI coming in and doing that stuff for us? I, I think it introduces other potential tools and applications. I think, you know, AI being a classification of automation or being able to, to automate and bring business intelligence to certain problems or approaches, I, I would say it will have a natural fit as we continue to progress and as the technology changes. But I think the, the end result or the goal is the same as to apply logic to um, processes to further automate and, and all those, those manual tasks that exist today so that folks can focus on items that, that can't be simply performed by, you know, machine learning. Great. We are talking with Tim Wenner, who leads Logisolve's software group for cash reconciliation revenue cycle. Cars and Beanware are the names of those products. Tim Wenner, thank you very much for joining me this morning. It's always great talking to you. Thank you, Kelly. Hope to see you on the lake soon. Yeah. Everybody else out there, you are watching the podcast. Goals.